Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In episode 97 of Blazor Train, I gave you a conceptual framework for how Blazor works in .NET 8. In episode 98, we looked at Blazor in .NET 8 Release Candidate 1. In this episode, we're going to look at what's changed in .NET Release Candidate 2, which dropped on October 10th. This is the last release candidate before the official release in November. And that is coming up right now, right here, on So I'm looking at the documentation here at devblogs.microsoft.com. This is ASP.NET Core Updates and .NET 8 RC2, and I'm in the Blazor section. So this is a new feature in RC2, Global Interactivity for Blazor Web Apps. Basically, the template now lets you specify whether you want all of the components to be WebAssembly, Server, or Auto. And so then it sets up some things for you differently in the template. Otherwise, if you just select auto, like server and WebAssembly, and then per page component, then uh, you get to pick on a component by component level. And I kind of like that. But if you want everything to be auto everywhere all the time, you can select this guy right here, global. All right, so I'm just going to go over some of the new things in here, but I'm going to show you code. So if you haven't seen the last Blazor train, go look at that now, because that has a lot of the important stuff that I'm going to be talking about here, improvement-wise. So we're going to create a Blazor web app. We're just going to pick the default name. So here we go. Interactivity type is set to auto. Interactivity location is set to per page or component. I'm going to include the sample pages. So you notice that there isn't a counter eraser in the regular application. It's in uh, the client application. And this is just like it was in RC1, except that we needed to have a calling page in the server-based application. We no longer need that. However, notice that all of your interactive components, those that require inactivity, whether it's Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly, have to be in this client project. So let's just look at that. So here you've got Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly, whereas up here in the server app, you have ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly Server. So all of the stuff that does not need interactivity is up here in your server application. So you're going to do streaming rendering up here. You're going to do server-side rendering up here. And then anything that requires interactivity is going to be in this client app. Okay? And if you look in imports here on the server, you can see that we're already mapped to using the client. So that's good. All right, I'm going to go to weather first and I'm going to add something to it. So I wanted to figure out how could I maybe do some server-side rendering before the streaming rendering happens, right? How could I get some custom data out into the UI, you know, while we're waiting for the, the forecasts? And here's the answer. Uh, I just created a message. And I said, right here, non-initialized async, data rendered at now too long time string, and then invoke state has changed. I added 500 milliseconds to the delay, and I also changed the number of forecasts from 5 to 50. So let's watch this now. There you go. So you saw this was rendered when I hit the page. Let's go back and do it again. 
data rendered at blah, blah, blah. And then I get 50 weather forecasts. All right, cool. Just a little tip. And I wanted to show that first. All right, let's move on to counter. So the attributes now have this interactive prefix. Render mode auto has become render mode interactive auto. Uh, render mode server has become render mode interactive server. But there's also a new keyword here. And if I go to imports, I can add a static using statement. Using static Microsoft ASP.NET Core components web render mode. And now up in counter, instead of having to do this attribute, I can just say at render mode, interactive auto, interactive server, or interactive web assembly. All right, I'm running from the command line. I'm going to run in edge this time. And um, look for web sockets. Go to counter. There's a web socket right there. Expand the messages. And the messages are happening. But now if I just wait for a minute, and maybe I go to weather, maybe I come home, go back to counter. Well, you can see that this is still here, but if I look at everything, now you can see all the WebAssembly files are there. So now if I filter on WebSockets again, and look at this as I click, no messages. We're in WebAssembly. Now check this out. One of the features uh, introduced in RC2 is they're closing circuits when there are no remaining interactive server components. So right now, if we go back here, the circuit is already disabled, but it's still there in the tools. And if I refresh, you can see it's not there at all. All right, I'm going to add the form demo that I showed in the last episode. So let me add a new page called Form Demo. So as I showed you in the last episode, this is an edit form. The edit form does not require a SignalR circuit. It does not require a WebAssembly. And it's not true interactivity. And I'll show you what I mean. First, I'm going to add uh, something to the nav menu so we can get here. And back at form demo, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. Watch what happens. Okay, message is blank. No big deal there. Now if I do something like Dave and sign up, message should be Carl, right? But it's blank. Message is blank. Because the edit form is just a way to get data to the server. Okay? There is no state. In other words, when you post this to the server, the page reinitializes, right? So there is no state. It's not keeping any state. Now let me show you something else. Watch up here as I click. Did you see the whole page refreshed? Okay. You can tell because the title changed and the refresh button changed. They both kind of flash, all right? But there's a new feature in .NET 8 for forms called Enhanced Form Handling. So all we really have to do on the edit form is use the Enhanced or enhance keyword. And now watch what happens. Watch again up here. Okay. No flash because the page didn't completely redraw itself. This is just another way that uh, Blazor 8 helps you with spa like stuff for very little effort on your part. Now that enhanced form handling is not on by default. You just need to use that enhance. Let's go back to the code. Put a breakpoint back here. And you might be thinking, well, 
does that enhance mean I have state? Nope. It's not truly interactive because the state isn't saved. Now, you can try things like adding a scoped service, like an app state or whatever. That's not going to work because you don't have any interactivity. You have to enable server, WebAssembly, or auto interactivity in order to get that state. So that's my demo for Blazor and .NET 8 RC2. Obviously, there's so much more to know. I encourage you to read the documentation. The link is in the repo. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. It just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? I'm going to be quite busy this fall upgrading my customers' web apps as well as my own. And on this trip, I'm bringing my own coffee. No offense, Gladys. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a train!